Godot, what started out as an obscure open source project, has taken the spotlight in recent years. Yeah, that's probably why. With its node-based system, its 2D and 3D capabilities, not to mention it having the greatest logo of all time, it's honestly crazy to me just how powerful this free game engine truly is. It's also been used to make super successful games like Brotato, Domekeeper, and the up-and-coming Dewdrop Dynasty. Wait. That's my game. But the question that most people have is, is it any good? Now, unlike my other programming videos, I'm actually very familiar with Godot. So instead of telling you why I like it, I figured I would just challenge myself to remake my brother's legendary game, Sky Balloon Freakout. And I'll let you be the judge. Let's get started. Now, a couple of months ago, my brother wanted to challenge himself to make an entire game just in a single day. And thus, Sky Balloon Freakout was born. And uh, not to be confused with the eerily similar Spy Balloon Freakout that happened last year. Yeah, that was just coincidence. I think. And basically the idea is to carelessly float around the clouds and the beautiful wind and dodge the incoming fighter jet and bullets trying to take you out and destroy you. Anywho, ever since he made it, I've been really curious to see what it would look like if I created my style and put my own spin on it. So basically, I'm remaking a game that's inspired by another game. Yes. Yes, I am. So we create a project and it was time for us to make some movement. It's actually pretty simple. I just threw in some code and then wait, um, nothing's happening. I threw in some more code and I forgot to add the input mapping. Uh, yes, that's kind of important. And now it works. Next, I just wanted to smooth out the movement a little bit and make it feel less stiff. I just applied a lerp to it and voila. And then I also applied rotation when you would go in a certain direction, but uh, this looks terrible. I just kind of want the character to lean in that direction, not do a full on somersault. Next, I create a boundary system because the player could just leave the room and that's not what we want. And with that, we have the basic controls of the game so far. You can move, you can go out of bounds, Great. It's time for some fun stuff, like score. I had a score meter at the top and I even had this little press to start text just so you know like you actually have to press space to play the game. I then made it so your score increases with every second and if you go out of bounds it resets. Now this is great and all, but we need an enemy. We need something scary, something so terrifying that it will make the player truly want to run away. And this is the best placeholder artwork I could come up with. With that I made the enemy follow you around and if it touches you it resets. I also started working on this bullet, it looks really weird. Don't don't worry, we're gonna replace the art. Trust me on this. And then I made it so that the bullets would spawn in randomly. This is insane. If someone please stop this. And now we almost have the main core loop of the game, minus the fact that that bullet just went through me. And now it was time for my favorite part of any project I work on, and that's, of course, creating the artwork. So I turned my brother's balloon man into a vector balloon man, and he looks, um, threatening? Anywho, after a few iterations, I was able to get this version of him and I, you know, I love him. And after this, I just threw him in the game to see how he looked. And once I was pretty happy with him, I jumped back into creating the rest of the artwork. I create a bullet, I create a jet fighter, and you'll notice that I added like this interesting drop shadow effect to it. And that's because I wanted it to feel almost more like a Wii game and play with more texture. I think it's cool. It almost looks like a sticker floating around the sky. I don't know. Let me know what you think of it. After that, I create a sky background, which totally looks like Andy's wallpaper from Toy Story. I play around with some texture with this as well and a vignette just to kind of keep the focus on the player and not the corners of the screen. And honestly, all together, this stuff looks really nice, except for obviously type and stuff. You know what? Let's do that now. And speaking of type, you can't have a game without a logo. I end up calling the Sky Balloon Freakout DX because it's special. After that, I polished up the menu and then I created this awesome cloud shader to give texture in the background. And by create, I mean, I totally just found this online and took it. So thank you for whoever made it. At this point, it was purely polishing which has become my favorite part of working on any of these sorts of projects. I started adding sound effects, sound design. I made it so that when you die, you go into slow motion. I don't know what's going on with this fighter jet. I then created a bunch of triangles that explode out of you when you die and it looked weird, so I fixed it. Lastly, I created some transitions and added some more sound effects. And most importantly, I created some different face variations on the balloons that way, you know, not every run will feel the same. And that's pretty much Sky Balloon Freakout DX. Honestly, it was incredibly fun just trying to remake a game that already exists. I know I kind of do that a lot here on this channel, but specifically doing it for my brother's game, I don't know, it just felt kind of special. Also, it was a blast working with Godot. I always love using this engine and hopefully it comes across just how easy it was to use, so. But for some reason, if you're struggling and you would like to learn how to code yourself, then check out a word from today's sponsor, Brilliant.
Brilliant has thousands of lessons from foundational advanced math to programming, AI, neural networks, and more, with new lessons being added each month. And their interactive lessons have been proven to be six times more effective than passive learning, like just watching random lecture videos. Being able to see what you're learning is really important for engaging with concepts. And Brilliant storytelling makes abstract ideas actually relatable. One course I really like is Computer Science Fundamentals. It basically is Programmers 101. It helps with decision making, writing, writing programs and algorithms. It's fantastic and I highly recommend it. To try everything Brilliant has to offer, there is a 30 day free trial. All you have to do is visit brilliant.org slash goodgifts or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. And I just wanna say thank you to Brilliant for supporting the channel and my game dev journey. Also, if you wanna check out some other things I've done, make sure to go check out goodgifts.fun. It's my website. I got interviews there, I got FAQ, I got secret stuff. It's awesome. Go check it out. and. I'll see you next time. Peace.